Welcome to the VR Aperture. We have an amazing show for you today. We have lots of information to share. First up, we have an update about the index controller, specifically with the thumbstick issue. We have an update about the Vive Cosmos, and we have two sci-fi level developments in the VR world. So stay tuned. My name is Destroy Troy, and I will be your host through the Aperture. Starting off, we received our index controllers back from RMA. It now works perfectly. For those of you who didn't know, there is a button underneath the thumbstick, so when you click it, it engages. The problem was, is when the thumbstick was in the forward position, that button would not register. In addition to that, there was no haptic click sensation when you when you depressed it. When it was only when it was in the upward position, though. Now, not only do you get that button engagement when it's in the forward position, but it also has the haptic sensation, the click feel. So if you remember from Steam's initial response, they said that that haptic click sensation was absent by design. So Valve either changed the design since then, or Steam wasn't being completely honest with us, maybe. I'll leave that up for you to decide. But we have to say that although Steam did replace our controllers, the process was excruciating. The fact that Steam does not offer telephone technical support or even live chat support makes it difficult for us to recommend the index to you. Having had experienced the Steam support ourselves, each back and forth we had with Steam in regard to the RMA process would take up to 48 hours for them to respond back after us providing the requested information. Whereas if this was done by telephone, it would have been concluded within 15 minutes. We here at the VR Aperture actually have this idea that we might start a petition amongst the gaming community to pressure Valve into including at least, at least live chat support for at least the index consumers. You know, getting video game returns through their basically in-app email service was fine for video games, but now when we're dealing with a thousand dollar product, that is no longer sufficient. We're going to start a discussion post down below. If you support this idea, please hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. In addition to that, those of you who commented on the last video who said that we were a bit harsh on the Cosmos, and some of you even wondered you know, if we're sponsored by Valve, we're not. And I think the fact that we're critical of Steam's technical support is kind of evidence of that. Moving on to the Cosmos update. Oh boy, so not going quite as well as they had hoped, right? First off, we have to correct something from the last video. We said that the wireless adapter would restrict the Cosmos refresh rate to 60 frames per second. That is incorrect, but there is a debate going on about what lenses are in the Cosmos. And on that matter, we're not quite ready to concede on, especially in light of some of the things that are in the news lately. For those of you who don't know, the debate is on whether or not Cosmos has redesigned new lenses with a greater sweet spot. During the course of this debate, we had a user provide us a link in the comment section to a video by Adam Savage's Tested, where he got a demo with the Cosmos prior to release and he states that HTC told him directly that the lenses have a 40% improvement in lens clarity, but he said that the demonstration wasn't long enough for him to visually confirm this. Another user within our comment section provided us a link to a JPEG, a fuzzy JPEG, which appeared to be from HTC off of an Amazon website in the EU, and it stated a 40% improvement in lens clarity. And I would say two things about this. One, a 40% improvement in lens clarity is not the same as a 40% improvement in the sweet spot. Those are two totally different things. The improvement in lens clarity could be a change in the material that they molded it, the lens from to an improvement in the Fresnel concentric circle design itself. Whereas the sweet spot is the area in the center of the lens in which you achieve maximum focus. So if you look closer at that JPEG, it actually says lens clarity, not sweet spot, not the same thing. And the second thing I would say is I would take any advertisement off of Amazon with a grain of salt, especially in this case where we were not able to corroborate that information with the HTC website. 
So what do the other reviewers amongst the community say? Well, Virtual Reality Oasis said he had quite a difficult time lining up that sweet spot. And you may not even want to know what Gaming with Mateo 311 said as he goes on a self-described rant for over 20 minutes about his complaints with the Cosmos. One of those features being the flip-up design. We actually went into depth on this in the original shooting of our previous video and then cut it for time constraints. But we suspected off the bat that by combining the Halo head strap with a flip-up design was going to be a recipe for disaster. And this flip-up design is causing difficulty for people lining up the sweet spot and then maintaining the sweet spot in the proper position because the visor's flip-up design keeps causing the visor to pull away from the face. Even RoadToVR.com supports this position and adds a few more criticisms into the mix. The one being the tracking, which is echoed by several other reviewers. When you reach behind your back or one controller eclipses another, and it loses tracking, which is not uncommon, it doesn't re-establish that tracking very quickly. Another issue RoadToVR.com points out is game compatibility. Kind of a point of embarrassment is that the Cosmos wasn't even compatible with all of Viveport's games, let alone Steam's games. And their response is, oh, well, it's compatible with 90% of Viveport's games but those are your games and there's only and it's only 90 percent and i my understanding from from other reviewers is that with steam games that compatibility is much lower but htc did address one thing that they consider to be a rumor and that is the, the two hour battery life of the controllers they say it's actually closer to four to eight hours depending on the application so if you're a Cosmos consumer, if you're an owner of one of these, please leave a comment below and let us know what you think about the battery life of the controllers. And then we can do an update down the road and let the rest of the community know. Now, on to the game-changing news that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The entire line of HTC visors is going to be compatible with a new eye tracking system called the Dralloon F1, and it's by Seven Invenson, which I have to ask, who comes up with these product and company names? The mod will only be $150 and will be compatible with the Vive, Vive Pro, and Vive Cosmos. And in addition to that, there's been some rumors that it may be compatible with the Valve Index, but we're not able to confirm that yet. The reason why eye tracking is so exciting is because not only does it make foveated rendering possible, which allows lower spec PCs to run high resolution visors, but it also ushers in biometric identifiers, automatic IPD adjustment, and verifocal displays. For my many friends in the comments, foveated rendering may be the solution to your justifiable complaint that the Rift is too low res, the index is too expensive, and the Cosmos is too unimpressive. Your solution may come in the form of a revitalization of the older Vive units, which are now going down in price. Biometric identifiers will allow the visor to identify the user based on a retinal scan and load their preferences accordingly, which will be especially useful for multi-user households. Eye tracking will also allow for motorized IPD adjustment, where the eye tracking will automatically determine the distance between the eyes and adjust the distance of the lenses accordingly, which will provide a much more precise adjustment. And most importantly, verifocal displays. You may have heard about eye tracking, but you probably haven't heard about verifocal displays. This will actually allow the display to come in and out based on the distance of the object that you're looking at within the visor. And this breakthrough is going to lead to true virtual reality image immersion. Current VR systems provide stereoscopic vision, which simulates 3D, but it never gives you that holodeck feeling of walking into a new world. This is because of the Virgin's accommodation conflict that our eyes experience within VR. If you'd like to see a very nerdy video explaining the Virgin's accommodation conflict, stay tuned to the end of the video and click on the link. Unfortunately, Michael Abrish, the chief researcher at Oculus, says users won't see this until 2022. So to the user that I was debating with in the comments section about whether or not eye tracking was going to be coming anytime soon, in addition to HTC working on it and Oculus working on it, Apple's also working on eye, their own version of eye tracking, Fove, Qualcomm, and Magic Leap. 
a few more game-changing developments that may have you rethinking your Cosmos purchase. The Quest is getting an update in November, adding a feature called Oculus Link. Oculus Link will allow the Quest to perform like the Rift in that it can connect to a gaming PC via USB Type-C cable, and then in that provide access to the entire Oculus PC exclusive game library. And with a little bit of tweaking, potentially the entire library of Steam games. The unfortunate reality is though that even USB Type-C can't accommodate the bandwidth required for high resolution video for a visor. So Oculus has elected to use a form of foveated rendering to maximize the picture within the center and then compress the image in the peripheral vision and re-upscale on the visor's end. Those who got to try it have said that it's it seems like a fairly seamless reproduction of the original image, but in comparison to the Rift, it has a smoothing effect. Then in early next year, the Quest is getting hand tracking. Oculus's approach is quite impressive in that instead of using depth sensors or special gloves, they're using the monochrome cameras that are built into the visor with deep learning software. For those of you who aren't aware, deep learning software is a branch of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks inspired by the human brain and have results that sometimes exceed human capabilities. Oculus boasts that this provides superior tracking to older hand tracking systems like the Xbox Kinect at a fraction of the size, weight, and cost. And not to worry, all the processing is done on device so it won't tie up resources on your system when running your favorite game. Unfortunately though, Oculus doesn't mention games as a use case in the articles for the hand tracking. And this may be because it, may, it might not be up to the high demand of gaming in that hand tracking is likely to experience the same tracking issues as other inside out tracking systems where you'll lose tracking if you put your hands behind your back or if one hand eclipses the other. In this case, it may be even if the back of your hand eclipses one of your fingers. And with the complaints that we've heard about the Cosmos not reestablishing that tracking very well, this is why they may not be boasting it as a use case for gaming. So we'll just have to see. So don't throw out your controllers just yet, but this may provide an interesting hybrid scenario for shooter games where you're using a VR gun controller, you can holster that weapon and still have hand tracking. So you'll get that added immersion effect of actually pulling your weapon. So if you're a fan of these type of games, just kind of consider that for a minute. Any of you Oculus Quest owners in January you get to try this out, please leave a comment below. Lastly, I promised that I would talk about a sci-fi level development in VR. Well, here it is. This is a wearable, ultra-thin, flexible skin that provides haptic feedback to the user without motorized vibrations. Amazing, right? So what they've done is they've shrunk down pneumatic actuators, which is basically like a little air pressurized piston to near microscopic level and laced it into the skin. They boast that you can feel objects in VR as if it was in the real world. The specs include a 100 hertz real-time response, which applies up to a newton of force. The scientists say the next step is to make a full body suit. This is what VR is missing. Can you imagine full body sensation while in VR? Sounds a little cumbersome, you imagine the, the size of the air compressor you'd have to put in your home and the tubes that would connect to that? But still really an amazing breakthrough. That's the news for this week. We really appreciate you tuning in once again. And we'd also like to extend a very heartfelt, warm thank you to those of you who've subscribed. We recently made it over 100 subscribers, which made us eligible for a custom YouTube URL. So now we can be reached at youtube.com forward slash the VR Aperture in addition to at the dot VR dot Aperture on Instagram. So I look forward to hearing from you. If you like this video, please leave a comment below, hit the thumbs up, and if you'd like to support this channel, please subscribe. Thank you again and have a great rest of your week.